from sunny Dubai and I'm here with my good friend Mohammed and who uh, is one of the original people in Bitcoin space. You originally have started in traditional finance. That's right. How did you get into Bitcoin? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, as you said, my background is um, traditional finance. So I've been a hedge fund manager in London since 2004. I've done it almost 15 years, um, you know, focusing on equities and uh, convertibles, but mostly equities. So when you, when you are an investor in the public markets, you work with imperfect information because obviously there is rules and regulations around what CEOs and CFOs can tell you. And uh, you're always looking at half the picture, at 80% of the picture, and you need to make investment decisions based on that. So one of the things that I've always been focused on is what technology can disrupt the investments that I'm uh, invested in. As an example, if you're long Walmart, which is you know, one of the largest retailers on the globe, you need to know about Amazon. If you don't know about Amazon, then you don't know what is going to come your way, what might disrupt you. So I was looking always at technology from that perspective, basically, because most of our investments were in the old economy space. Mm -hmm. That's how I stumbled upon Bitcoin, basically. So um, one of my ex-colleagues had gone and joined uh, Bitcoin Miner, and uh, he came to the office to pitch that business to us, basically. And that's when in 2015, I got introduced to Bitcoin and immediately I realized this is something huge and uh, I always compare it to a holding company that has multiple subsidiaries where everything is listed and they have cross shareholdings mm -hmm. so it's very difficult to get your head around yeah. the valuation of it etc and back in that time you know there was barely any information you know I was watching videos of 13 year old guys and kids <laughs> you know exactly. sitting in their in their mom's bedroom basically trying to explain this technology to us and um, yeah, that's how I got introduced into Bitcoin and have uh, been fascinated since. So you, you're a big uh, proponent of Bitcoin and you, have, uh, you speak at conferences, you attend events and um, always quite uh, positive. But are you still positive? This bull market, is it the same as what we saw before or uh, do you see different sentiments? Yeah, that's a very good question, Irina. I, I really think that this bull market that we are experiencing right now since the middle of 2020, is a very, very different one. I mean, this is the one that um, I was on a conference in 2018 in London um, and, I, and, and, the, and the title of my panel discussion was the institutional highways are arrived, uh, have been established. Back then, the title of the panel was that, but it wasn't true, basically, right? Because institutions weren't involved in a large scale in um, digital assets back then. Now that's changed. And this is what I say the 2020 bull market is all about. The ICO boom back in 2016, 17 was, I have an idea, this is my target addressable market, why don't you give, send me some Ethereum or send me some Bitcoin and then I'll see what I'll do about it. Zero regulation, zero cross checkings, zero fiduciary duty, you know, people were doing exit scams, all sorts of things basically, we've all seen that. That was a very different bull market. This one here, you have proper innovation, right? I mean, I've even come to the terms now where I've, I'm not calling the altcoin space shitcoin space anymore, right? In the, oh, really? in the bad day, in the back, yeah. back then, I would be happily calling them shitcoins, basically. I'm only using that term because it's a term that really has established itself in the vocabulary. But now I would say, like, you look especially into DeFi, you look in the NFT space, you know, there is so much innovation happening. And for the first time, I can see how traditional finance entities are actually going to get disrupted. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see that in 16, 17. Okay. I now can see that. And if I look forward now, three, four, five years from where we are now, I can see that, you know, now the, the game is on, basically, right? The disruption is going to start from now on, basically. Wow, that's, uh, that's, quite, a, that's why, uh, quite a positive outlook. Any particular projects or uh, each needs to do their own due diligence I wouldn't want into to DeFi space? Yeah, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, I wouldn't want to mention specific projects, but um, uh, within the DeFi space, anything related to um, you being able to swap tokens, swap, swap ownership basically mm -hmm. uh, on decentralized exchanges, I find that highly, highly interesting. Okay. Just imagine a world where right now you're just swapping an Ethereum with, uh, you know, Bitcoin or you're swapping, you know, whatever Uniswap with another token, right? But imagine a world where you can swap the ownership of your real estate in Dubai with the mezzanine tranche of uh, the Meridian in London, mm -hmm. for example, right? Or think of your, you know, chalet in Switzerland that, you know, somebody wants to sell and you now swap that ownership with the hotel ownership in New York, basically, okay. right? I'll I mean, swap my chalet for your hotel. Yeah. <laughs> 
So things like that now, if you think forward, you know, all of these assets are going to get tokenized. Once they're get, getting tokenized, and NFT comes into play there, basically, mm -hmm. right? The non-fungibility aspect mm -hmm. of the ownership. Once you think about that type of environment, that changes the whole game, basically, right? And, and that's what makes me really, really excited. So we are in a beautiful um, DIFC space. Thank you, DIFC FinTech Hive, for hosting us. Anything particular you're excited from the regulatory space coming out of Dubai, coming out of um, uh, regulators in Dubai? Yeah, so um, I don't think we are there yet, uh, but I'm in touch with um, the policy makers and the decision makers here in the region as well. And I can say that behind the scenes, there is a lot of work being done mm -hmm. to make sure that um, Dubai is now at the forefront of um, this uh, ecosystem, right? I mean. Before 2020, it was almost a career risk, basically, yeah. to, to come up and be at the forefront because you didn't know where this digital asset space was going to go to. I think 2020 has eliminated that risk, right? And uh, exactly like institutional asset managers now are forced to look into the space and actually not looking into it might become a career risk for them. Yeah. Exactly the same way now it's changing for policymakers, for, for regulatory people, right? In 2015, I left a job of a regional general counsel for the largest shipping group in the world and I started working full-time in crypto space right people thought I was crazy people yes. thought I you know what is wrong with you are you having a mental breakdown but I do feel now vindicated I do feel that because I saw a lot of potential in, in in Bitcoin particularly and now I feel so vindicated yeah and now Bitcoin is the third largest currency in the world yeah so now those who laughed at us back in the day now I'm sure you do getting the same you're getting the calls you know how do I get into Bitcoin correct so this is uh, a, you know this is good time uh, <laughs> like I feel like my um, you know five years of my life has been vindicated so now talking about Dubai as a, as, a, as a place as an ecosystem as a place to live and to work and to do business yeah Dubai tourism is um, uh, graciously hosting um, AIBC Summit right. in Dubai, um, and they're graciously sponsoring. So how do you, you know, uh, to all those people who are listening to us and watching us now, what would be the top uh, advice for them? Uh, why should they come to Dubai? Why should they come and live in Dubai, establish in Dubai? Why should they attend the AIBC Summit? What are the top tips you'll give to people? Yeah, I mean, look, um, uh there's a few things I would say to that. And I, and I just had a meeting actually with a policymaker just before this, um, this event. I'm coming in here to speak to you. Um, when you think about the world that we are going into, we are going into a decentralized world, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'll give you an example. Coinbase, everybody's talking about the Coinbase IPO. The whole world knows about it. It's already filed it as S1 filing. It's going to be somewhere between 60 and 100 billion because it's going to be a direct listing mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, you know, the largest exchange that does exactly almost the same volume as Coinbase on a daily basis is called Uniswap. Mm -hmm. It's a decentralized exchange. No one has heard of it, uh, you know, in the traditional finance world. Why? Because the word DeFi has only been mentioned four times in the Wall Street Journal and the word Uniswap has never been mentioned in the Wall Street Journal yet. But here there is a company that is making the same volumes as around the same free cash flow like Coinbase, but is not even mentioned once. Mm -hmm. on Wall Street Journal, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the world we're going into. And in that world, ecosystems like Dubai, city countries or city places like Dubai that have security, you know, the regulatory framework, the lifestyle, the tax environment, all of these things for people that are want to set up global businesses, those are the, gonna be the places that are going to win. So I think the race is going to be, you know, between the Singapore's, the Dubai's, the Malta's, and these kind of cities basically that are at the forefront of this, and are trying to you know, stay ahead of the game, basically. And why am I saying it's Dubai? Because I believe you know, it's probably the most multicultural city I've ever lived in, and I've lived in many cities on the globe. Um, probably the most cultural, basically, inter you know, multicultural. It's very safe, it's got a tier one banking system, it's got a packed currency to the dollar, so it's basically a dollar environment. Um, it's got the best restaurants, the best beaches, the best hotels, you know, I don't need to say about that, so the lifestyle is yeah. probably one of the best on the globe. And, uh, and the weather is amazing, right? So, um, exactly. you know, I always say if Dubai would have, if London would have the weather of Dubai, it would have 50 million inhabitants, basically, yeah. right? So um, that's why I would say Dubai, you know, come, out, come here, check it out, come to the conference, enjoy the event, and then see whether you like it as well. But I haven't seen one person that comes and says, no, oh, you know like what? Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, we, we all stay. I came here 12 years ago on a 12-month contract. 
and I'm still, and still here. here. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> You're not going to get rid of me anytime soon. You mentioned a couple of uh, things which I really like. Um, a small state, city states will own the world. Singapore, Dubai, okay, Malta is a Correct. little island. Do you expect them to start um, uh, announcing that they have Bitcoin on their treasuries, just like Tesla did, just like Microsoft Very good question. did? Do you expect states to go in there? Very good question. So I wrote an article actually in The Independent that was published no a week or 10 days or maybe two weeks <laughs> Not ago. Not that I read it and shared it with all my friends. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know. <laughs> Thank you. So basically there I made the case that emerging economies should add digital assets to their foreign currency reserves, right? Now, I do believe that exactly the point that you're making is going to happen. And actually, if you, if you look at what happened now recently, you know, there is already talk that GIC and Tamasek might have, an, might have a position as well already. There is talk that, you know, the Norwegian um, uh, uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund might already be involved. Obviously, these, these entities don't necessarily disclose it or disclose all their positions. But um, there is already decent talk that, that these guys are involved. And I'm, I personally believe, like you said, it, it's just going to get... Uh, the, the, their involvement, exactly like all the traditional finance, pension funds, you know, um, hedge funds, you know, long only funds, you know, I think it's just going to go viral within that space because this is at a minimum digital gold. And, you know, if it is digital gold and no one has it, then, mm -hmm. you know, you need to go at least to the digital gold level, which is, you know, at 12, 13 trillion um, asset market, right? And we're at 1 trillion now for BTC, for Bitcoin at the moment. Another nice thing that you mentioned, Coinbase is going public, but they specifically stated in their prospectus documents that they don't have headquarters, that they're a decentralized yes. company. You, you, you mentioned uh, Uniswap, they never had headquarters. Binance, one of the largest exchanges, they never had any headquarters. They're like sort of all over the place. So what do you think about DAO? Is DAO the future? Is a decentralized autonomous organization something we will see more of? Because there's um, only one jurisdiction in the world, that, uh, which is Wyoming in the US, that ha gives some sort of recognition to DAO as a legal entity. Right. Me being a lawyer, you know, how do I reconcile it in my head that there is a decentralized autonomous organization? Who do I sue? How do I sue them? Right. How do I, you, where do I serve notices? So what do you think about the DAO space? Is that something uh, we should pay attention to or is it a complete hype that will go away? No, so good, very good question as well. I think, the, I think in our lifetime, and I consider both of us very young, so in yes. our lifetime, I think that uh, we will see uh, a DAO-based governance system of mm -hmm. a country, and maybe that's of Switzerland. A country. Of yeah, and then maybe that might be Switzerland, of which already has wow. direct, you know, democracy basically yes. with all the, um, uh, you know, questions and recommendations they yeah. go to their to their every citizens week directly. Every week there is a referendum every that week. I get a letter to participate. Correct, in, yes. correct, right. So I think you know that's where we will see on the governance level the DAO-based system basically, where referenda can be held digitally with digital footprints yeah, and IDs, okay. etc. But then there'll be a small amount of government representatives to execute those of decisions. Course. And so, so I think in our lifetimes, we will see wow. um, you know, a decentralized autonomous organization in public um, service, basically, right? So I, I'm even going that far, right? It's not going to be tomorrow, but um, I just can't see how it's not going to happen, basically. Okay, well, right? everything and, and I don't think it's 50 years away, which is why I said in our lifetimes, you know, we will see it. Well, everything you said so far has, uh, has occurred, so I look forward to a decentralized autonomous government yes, governance. being created. Correct, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank anything you. Anything else you want to mention to no. our amazing audience? The, the only thing I would say is, guys, um, take this, take this uh, ecosystem very seriously. Um, like you said, all our friends, they were laughing at us, you know. I mean, I had a lot of guys saying, oh, man, Mohammed was this big shot hedge fund manager, but now he's doing digital assets. He must have lost the plot, etc. <laughs> now, you know, everybody's coming back. So I would really just say, you know, some of the smartest people I've seen, I've met in this industry, in this ecosystem, and, uh, you know, they're doing some tremendous work, some, some, in, in, some unbelievable innovation. I would really just urge people that are looking at this for the first time to get introduced into the ecosystem to take this very seriously. This is not some 15-year-old kids that are wasting their time playing computer games. No, it's old people like this us. This is actually a real, <laughs> yeah, it, this is a real em ecosystem emerging that is probably going to change the world, basically. That would be my only message that I Fantastic. would want to come Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so pleased you could make it and I hope everybody can make it too. Uh, the May Summit, where they can meet you, hear you speak, Thank because you. it has been very, very insightful. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Rina. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.